I think it's probably fair to say that teleoptometry or remote consultations, telemedicine, whichever terminology people are using, um, has really kind of been thrust upon us as an optometry sector over the last few months. So bearing that in mind, we thought what a great opportunity to just pause, take stock and really reflect on the learnings that everyone has had over the past few months. When we first started our remote consultations, our patients were surprised to hear from us um, and surprised that we were willing to do something over the phone for them, which then turned into really grateful and understanding patients. The quality of the conversations were different, but just as good than seeing them face to face. And if the patient is worried, if we're worried about what they're telling us, we can bring them in. And I think what's really great is that we know it's a safe way and we know it's a legal way of looking after our patients. We're not putting our clinicians at risk. We're not putting our patients at risk by doing it. And it's fun. So this has pushed us But at exactly the same time, it's pushed our patients. It's safe and it's secure and you get that good two-way conversation. And and patients love the convenience. They love the time saving. And as much as they love me, they're really happy just staying at home and not (laughs) having to come into the practice. 2017, Nathan Efron and Philip Morgan produced a paper and they looked at the evidence base behind annual aftercare. And demonstrated that it it had really grown from zero evidence base. So I think as long as you're in a position to be able to intervene when somebody has a defined problem with vision or or pain, then the remoteness of the aftercare, such as Lynn's talked about, makes absolute sense and it's perfectly safe. What isn't safe is someone who develops a painful red eye and then phones their eye care practitioner and the doors are closed. Are there challenges as well as benefits? We've got better at collecting emails. I think that was a really um, important thing that we learned through through lockdown was our patients saying, well, we didn't hear from you and going, well, let's find out, do we have your emails and what communication settings do we have for you? So that was a really important thing that we've managed to correct through our phone consultations. So we're able to speak to our patients more. If you're trying to send high data images like optimaps across the internet or you're trying to do video calls um, as well depending on the internet um, that you've got set up that can be a bit more difficult. And then it was actually convincing the optometrist that they could actually do this as well. I think there was this this sort of feeling that oh no what if I miss something what if I don't ask the right question. You're asking the same things that you would do if that patient was sitting right in front of you you're gathering the same data it's just that their, their physical self isn't in front of you. What worked particularly well when it came to that contact lens patient journey? What worked really well is that we were able to keep a huge number of patients in contact lenses safely. If we hadn't been able to see them either physically or over the phone, what would they have done? And we all know that some of our contact lens patients aren't as compliant as we would like or as they might say. Lots of them may have gone to their glasses if they'd had them but most of them could well have gone to find an old pair that may have been out of date continue to wear a monthly or continuous wear lens that they shouldn't have what was vital for everybody was to find a way to look after our patients I think that patients felt more in contact with us you know the old-fashioned they walk into the practice there's the receptionist or they ring up and there's the receptionist, and you never actually get to speak to the optometrist in the back room. It's just been this opening up of communication, and, and I think people have absolutely loved it. So patients could just email um, for contact lens queries or email just to ask, can I have some more supply, or I'm running low, or I've ripped a lens, what can I do? Um, so I think that was the, the biggest thing. It just shows the power of email. In email, you can have that ready and sent the minute there's another announcement, um, and that the power of that was, was huge. The most positive thing that came out of it was our cus- our patients didn't feel forgotten. What tools have you used? We know more people will straight away go to the internet to search for advice. So pointing them in the right direction to the safest places for advice has been um, really important. From a younger patient database, we would point our children, um, our kids to that. Um, so lots of them would come in for their appointment, knowing what to expect and having watched videos on how to 
in, um, to apply a lens and to remove a lens and be really confident with it. From a hospital perspective, what we've been talking about is sort of having the, the pathway sort of set out for this. So for our new patients, as I said, doing that pre-phone call, have that fitting appointment, we'll get uh, email addresses and telephone numbers and things like that. And then what we would have is that once we've got the lens ready, we would get the optical assistance to have and attend anywhere uh, consultation with the patient. The advantage of doing that bit is that they can run through the sort of cleaning processes. They can sort of start talking to them about how to manipulate their eyelids and things like that. They come in for the, the collection of the lens and they have the formal face-to-face -face teach with the optical assistant. And then again, about 10 days later, a booked attend anywhere appointment. And what we tended to find pre all of this is that the patients would come in six, seven weeks after their fitting appointment and not be wearing their lens and say, yeah, I was having difficult getting them in. And so I stopped. They would just be lacking the confidence. So I think having that somebody that's in front of them to talk them through it is probably going to help. Then the idea would be that once they become sort of more stable in their lenses, that we would be able to get rid of our six monthly sort of aftercare appointments that we have for many of our patients and actually do that as a telephone consult. The other thing that we want to try and do is when they are coming in for, sorry, when they are coming in for an appointment, that actually sending out them a smart survey so they can fill in all of the questions that we ask them. So we don't need to ask them that because that can then be imported straight into their EPR. What role would you like to see remote consultations play in the everyday management of patients? Um, and I think clearly COVID-19 will be with us um, and that will shape what 2021 and no doubt what the future looks like too. The patients love virtual consultations so much. I think we're going to really struggle to get them back into the, the test room. I think the remote consultations, every nth kind of visit will actually help patients realise why they then come into the practice. They understand why they come in for an eye exam, but I think sometimes the aftercare, it's, it's constantly saying to them, no, we're looking at the health of your eyes. I know you feel it's okay, but you know there could be like corneal sensitivity issues. And I think when they actually then come into the practice, they'll treat it more like clinical time and this is why you're looking at my eyes. I think for us a wider piece of thinking is around our recalls in general. Have we been quite blindly setting recalls instead of thinking about them a little bit more as to what is suitable for this lens type and for this patient? There'll be challenges and encouragements to think a bit more wisely around our recalls. So do we need to see this patient in practice or would a phone call work just as well, if not better. What do you see in 2021 and beyond as the ways in which remote consultation can enhance that journey? It's really completely rewriting the system. So if somebody says, oh, I'd like to be fitted with contact lenses, either they're lapsed or they're a brand new contact lens patient, we need to be sending them information before the appointments, just using kind of the technology to keep closer contact after the appointment, knowing that we are going to be contacting them using the My Lens Life, knowing that we're going to be contacting them by telephone still, I think, in, in three to five days to see how they're getting on. You know, that's something that's been invaluable is just is phoning the patients kind of every few days. And they like it as well, because it'll be a chance to just say, no, no, I'm getting on ground, I love them. Um, or actually, I'm running a little bit low because I decided to wear them a bit extra. So we can just say, right, we'll put a couple aside for you at the desk, or we'll post them out to you and just swing by and grab them. So it, it's really helped turn around our... Um, kind of fitting. We've learned to lose uh, the guilt that every piece of working time has to be spent in front of a patient. There are things that you can do in terms of your uh, planning, your, your staff education processes that make a huge difference to the efficient running of the practice. This thing that's happened in this year is a very small stepping stone to what we can potentially deliver in the future. And I don't think we would have got as far as we will do without these last nine months having taken place. It's going to be a real eye opener for people. What might stand in the way of you achieving that? We all know that ophthalmology is a huge problem in the NHS. It's the biggest outpatient appointment uh, service in the NHS. They need other clinicians to step up and take uh, the patient base and optometrists are in the ideal position to do so with the correct training. We have to take on the responsibility of managing non-surgical eye care in a primary care arena. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to massively ramp up optometric training. What we have seen in 2020 is one huge experiment within, optom within optometry. I don't think any of us were ready for it. 
Um, but I really hope that um, as a professional, we take the opportunity to just take those lessons and really steer and pave how we want our future to look um, rather than just letting it evolve over time. And I think we, we're at a real sort of opportunist moment right now.